faces here in our sanctuary now. Um, also, good morning to everyone that's going to be following us and listening to online. This is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it as we worship our risen Lord and Savior on this fourth Sunday of Easter. We're going to follow the order of Matins. Uh, so if you can follow along with the home, wonderful and great. We'll be singing two hymns this morning. Um, and then we'll be chanting the gradual and alleluia and verse for today because we are, again, in the season of Easter. Even though we celebrate Easter all year round, really. I don't have an insert. Well, you need an insert, Alan? You're good. So we'll be chanting those today to again keep celebrating the resurrection of our Savior Jesus from the grave. And then the canticle today is going to be the Tadeum. That's actually in the order of Matthew. So we'll be singing the Tadeum. Um, and then we'll be also chanting the Lord's Prayer. So everyone, even at home listening online, we, you can join along in chanting all of those as well. Hopefully you remember some of the... Um, Lyrics and words for today that we will be singing and chanting as we celebrate. Because Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen Alleluia. As we begin singing our opening hymn, hymn 467, just verses 1 through 4 of hymn 467, Awake My Heart with Gladness.
something I haven't said in a while. Please rise. <laughs> O oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. first reading for this, the fourth Sunday of Easter, is from Acts chapter 2. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings, and distributing the proceeds to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Now joining in uh, chanting our special gradual for today. Peter chapter 2. 
This is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if you do good and suffer for it, you endure. This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was his seat found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins and his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were string like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise, we sing our Alleluia in the special verse and for the gospel reading. St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Continuing with our Easter responsory. <laughs> Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Now is Christ risen from the dead. And become the first fruits of them that sleep. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. See, as we sing our voices to a risen Lord with him, 649, blessed be the tie that binds.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you all this morning from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and our helper, the Holy Spirit. Amen. A lesson for consideration is fourth Sunday of Easter is from the book of Acts. In the name of our risen Savior Jesus Christ, your people of God gathered here now in our sanctuary, and those of you listening online. Alleluia, Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, we think about Jesus as a Good Shepherd, and we, his sheep, and how he takes care of us, both physically and spiritually. He knows his sheep personally, and he calls them by name, and then leads them to the place where they go. We also think about the false shepherds and how we are to avoid them. And this is a picture of the early Christian church after Jesus ascended to heaven. Acts 2 says the disciples were devoted. In the original language, to be devoted means to hold fast to something, to continue in it, to persevere. Well, there are people who definitely know how to persevere, especially during this time. Grocery stores have to persevere during this pandemic in order to keep everyone fed. Schools need to persevere in order to keep educating their kids even though they can't meet in the building. Farmers have to persevere, continuing to milk cows even though that milk may go nowhere, and just waiting to get out into the fields so they can grow more crops while we need it to feed more and more people. And we all have to persevere right now, most of us having stayed home to stay safe. And the people who lost loved ones due to this virus, they can't give up. They must continue with their lives. And we should all pray and do what we can to help them and encourage them. Even though it hasn't really quite hit us hard here, we know people who definitely have been affected by this. And we continue to pray and give them words of encouragement, especially from our Good Shepherd. Because that's what the early Christians did. And what did they devote themselves to? And how did they persevere, especially during a time when they were too were being persecuted in a different sense? Well, four things were mentioned. The apostles' teaching, the breaking of bread, the fellowship, and the prayers. Well, the apostles' teaching had been delivered to us in the Gospels. It's what Jesus had taught his disciples to teach the rest of the world. Something we still teach today yet. Well, are we devoted to that, though? We say we believe in God and in the Bible, but are we devoted to it the way the early church was devoted to it? Do we hold fast to what Scripture actually says? There's a Gallup poll that says 77% of Americans today identify with some form of Christianity. Well, that's down from 91%. Over 60 years ago. And many of us live our lives in direct opposition almost to what the Bible really does say. How we should live. Because most people think that if you believe, then you are saved. So being devoted just isn't important at all. Oh, I believe, so therefore I know I'm going to heaven. Well, Martin Luther, the great reformer, said that we should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and the teaching of God's word, but gladly hear and learn it. I hope you, listening here in a sanctuary, listening online today, are not doing it by compulsion. Now, I know most of you are here because, yes, finally we can kind of open up our church doors and all some people in here. But hopefully it's not because, oh, I just, not because you feel compulsed that I just need to be here or you're being compulsed to listen online, but because you're thankful. I know most of us are thankful, finally, you can start meeting kind of in public a little bit, your public worship. But more than that, thankful for God's love and God's forgiveness. That even though we haven't been able to meet for some time in public, He's still been giving to us because nothing can keep our loves, God's love and forgiveness hidden, concealed, or gone. And you're here because you're ready to be devoted. No matter what's going on out there, you're still devoted to His Word that gives you salvation. And even online listening. You could have not left the computer off, but you're devoted and turned on the computer and got to our webpage so you could listen. And being devoted to his word gives you salvation. 
And it gives you a sense of peace. A peace and comfort that we need now amongst everything going on out in our world today. And the early Christians were devoted to the fellowship. Now, fellowship is more than what happens when we just meet for coffee in the morning after church and dessert downstairs, which we're not doing yet. But in the Bible, fellowship is when we have oneness with others because of Jesus. Where this oneness, we receive all the same gifts, forgiveness, peace, God's love, fortitude for living, and eternal life. When we are devoted to those things specifically, and other great gifts from God, we are in fellowship with one another. In the early Christian church, the disciples there devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. Now that can mean two things. When they ate together, there was like a bond that they had. It's like one of our potlucks that we have, and everyone brings the food, and we're all together during this wonderful meal, or during like a funeral luncheon. We bring food, and we share it together. There is a bond, a chance to visit, a chance to get to know each other, maybe even better, or a recap of maybe some memories that we have. We came to a meal for a purpose, and that's what the disciples met together. They met together in each other's homes with a purpose, and there they broke bread to eat. But the breaking of the bread can also mean Holy Communion, a sharing of the body of Christ. And I know today and for many other Sundays we won't be receiving our Lord's body and blood yet. But even so, that's still something that we should devote ourselves to. Meeting Jesus in the bread and wine that he has instituted. When we come to the Lord's Supper in faith, we want to have good relations, well, first of all, with our Savior, which only he does for us. But also good relations with our brothers and sisters in Christ. So, when we gather for word, and one day for sacrament again, especially as we gather together, let go of grudges and rivalries, and spread peace among the congregation. That's what we need now more than ever, is really true peace. And the fourth thing was the prayers. What prayers would the early Christian church know? They didn't quite have Martin Luther yet, and all the wonderful prayers that he wrote, especially his morning and evening prayer. They didn't, they didn't have that yet. That came 1,500 years later. Well, they had one big prayer that Jesus taught them as he taught us. The Lord's Prayer. Prayer that we've been saying for over two or 2,000 years now. And we learn its meaning. And we meditate upon it just like the disciples did. Well, they also had the Psalms. The prayers of the Old Testament. And they also had the songs of Scripture. Those were the prayers that they prayed. A famous pastor once said, Our prayer should be, enrich should be enriched by the treasury of Scripture, not by the poverty of our hearts. So it's important to gather together each week to offer our prayers to God, for the church, for our nation, for the specific needs of the people we know. Hence why the outline and order of prayers that we use every Sunday. <clears throat> Was the disciples dedicated and persevered through all of this, no matter what was going on, there was a reaction to the dedication of the early Christians. Awe came upon them. Signs and wonders were done by the apostles. They shared their possessions, even selling some things and sharing with the poor. Now, I'm not suggesting after you go home today that they decide to put your house on the market, which isn't going to sell right now anyway. But anywho, don't put your house in the market and sell your vehicles and everything else. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we all have something. Time. Under all, now we have lots of time on our hands. But maybe down the road some other time that you can have to offer to church to help out with things once we pick back up with other things going on here. Maybe you have a, a talent, an ability that God has blessed you with that you can do. There surely we all have something of the abundance that God provides us with that we can set aside and bring to God through our congregation to help, yes, our little congregation, but also to help our greater community of Newberry, Eastern UP, and really throughout the world. In the early church, 
even though they didn't have barely anything, they gave and did what they could with glad and generous hearts because they knew the gifts that the Savior just did for them not that long ago. There was no need for lectures on duty or what they need to do or how much they had to give. The overflow with thanks because they were so devoted to the teaching of Christ, the breaking of bread with each other, the bondship, the fellowship they had, and the prayers that the Lord has taught them to pray. As God the Father was devoted. He was devoted in all he did. He was devoted to the disciples, to their teaching and actions, devoted to our congregation, devoted to us, specifically when he gave his son over to die for us. And Jesus was devoted to his death on the cross and then rising from the dead to show us how he defeated death and all that we are afraid of. Because, hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. I gotta make sure you're all still awake yet. Can't fall asleep like people at home can here. <laughs> but Jesus calls us to devote ourselves to Him, hearing and learning His word as our good shepherd. He calls us by name and leads us to green pastures through His word and His sacraments. And then He warns us, yes, about the false shepherds and the wolves that are out there, some of which we know that's happening during this pandemic who try to steal us away and kill us for our own good. But no matter what, Jesus is still our good shepherd. No matter what, he still died for us. No matter what, he still rose for us. And through that all, calls us to be his devoted sheep that persevere in him. So hear that voice that now speaks to you. Jesus says, I know your guilt. I know your pain. I know what you are going through being secluded at home. Not being able to go out and do what you need to. Fearful of if the virus is going to hit us or not. I know it. For I've carried it to the cross. You could do nothing. So I have done everything for you. I died the horrible death you deserve by being rejected by the Father. Now you are free from your guilt. Now you are free from your sins. Now you are free from fear and worry. Because I have taken care of everything. Because I have erased your sins and taken away your punishment. You are forgiven. Hear that good news from our shepherd. Hear that teaching from him. Because something really has been devoted in the church. God has devoted to forgiving your sins. Alleluia to that. He has promised that he will remember them no more. He does that devotion right here in his house. He speaks his absolution to my lips. And he gives you to eat one day and drink the body and blood of his son. By these things you are forgiven. And may awe come upon your souls, and your whole being. It's not going to be something special, hair-raising, but something special inside, on our souls, that affects us and touches us for all eternity. So may God's Spirit keep you satisfied with the treasures of God that He has given us through His Son. Our human flesh wants to tell us that it's just not enough, that we need to do something, to add something more to His gospel to make it effective or make it more relevant. But the gospel of Christ is already effective. And he tells us, don't add to it and don't take away from it because in and of itself is already effective in saving us and strengthening us and comforting us. Because all by itself, all by the gospel of Christ, it is the power of God for salvation to all who have faith and truly devote themselves to Christ. So may God's Spirit keep us devoted to that gospel, which is the teaching of the apostles. May he keep us devoted to the breaking of bread. Instead of seeking all the spiritual substitutes that would feel good, it would be like a junk food addict who is destroying his body because he only eats what he wants to. And yeah, I put on my COVID-19 pounds <laughs> back again after I lost them during the weight challenge. But we seek the breaking of bread 
One day, yes, with each other when we have potlucks again. And one day, too, when we receive our Lord's body and blood in the fellowship of this altar. May he keep us devoted in fellowship and prayer as to what we need and what our sinful world needs as well. By the grace of God, let us steadfastly preserve in these things. Because in them is Christ, and in them is our salvation now and for all eternity. For he is risen. He is risen Alleluia. Amen. Now may the peace of God our Father guard your hearts and minds in our risen Savior Jesus Christ. As he fills you with the Holy Spirit, to remain devoted and persevere as his sheep that he calls by name as our good shepherd. Amen. We rise now as we boldly and devotely confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now join in singing the today.
continue with our Kyrie. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have awakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Bidden by our shepherd, let us come before his throne of grace in prayer for this day for Redeemer Lutheran of Fremont, for our nation and those who serve, for those who need healing, those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, and for all conditions and manner of all people. Blessed Shepherd, you establish your church with your sacrificial death and mighty resurrection. Grant us devotion that we may abide in the teaching of the apostles and honor the fellowship of the church. Guard us against all enemies of your word and keep us within the care of your flock and staff forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, gracious shepherd, you seek out those who have fallen and restore the sinner to repentance. Send forth your spirit to rekindle faith in the hearts of those who have fallen away from the truth or have been overcome by temptation and sin. Bring good from ill and increase in all the hunger for your word and a recognition of our need that many may be gathered into your flock when church doors are open wide again. Lord, in your mercy, loving shepherd, you love the world enough to shed your blood, and you desire that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Bless all those who have received calls this past week from the seminary, that as they go out soon to their congregations, you continue to bless them with your spirit to preach and teach the apostles' teaching and all that they have learned as they too grow in your word and faith. And then bless Redeemer Lutheran Church of Fremont, its mission and its people, its leaders and its pastor, giving them the ability to meet the needs that arise as they do the work you have given them to do in proclaiming the saving truth of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty Shepherd, you hold in your hands all the might of man, and you hold accountable those who would govern your people. Grant to us good government and good leaders who will honor your purpose, protect your people, serve the cause of justice, and defend our liberty against all threats. Give them godly wisdom, common sense, and moderation in this pandemic response. Lord, in your mercy, merciful shepherd, your wounds are our healing and your voice calls us to you in time of need. Hear us on behalf of all those who suffer in body or mind, who grieve those whom they love and to whom death draws near. We pray especially for those named in our bulletin and those we name in our hearts.
Grant them healing according to your will. Grace to sustain them in the day of trouble in hope of the new and everlasting life to come. Be with the unemployed and the distraught and return them to health and livelihood. Lord, in your mercy, giving shepherd, you have not withheld anything from us, but emptied yourself fully upon the cross that we might be saved. Bless those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, including Paul and Chris Girardi, that as they celebrate another year of life or marriage, you continue to watch over them, providing for all their needs and granting them joyful celebrations. Grant them another year of life or marriage to come if it be your will, so they may continue to cherish, grow, and abide in your love and saving grace. Lord, in your mercy, O great good shepherd, we pray you to hear your sheep and answer our prayers with mercy. Granting us those things profitable for us and our salvation, keep from all things harmful.